Like, that wasn't the, the whole goal. Like, but class and race are generally intertwined. Um, but it wasn't the goal for just a young black men. It was supposed to be just be like, for people that went to like simple like community schools, for example, or or people that, um, or just like any white person who is from a working class background from Burnley. Do you know what I mean? From anywhere in sort of the UK. Like, so like a lot of it is obviously the people involved in it, like Maro, Genji, Anthony and Bialo are all like uh, featuring in it. So when they speak on it, it's it, a lot of it is down to their interviews and like how what they say about it, how the that's how the narrative is brought forth. Okay, lads, time to deliver. Amazon delivers you the rugby, the Autumn Nations Cup, live on Prime Video. I can't allow that. Benno, great to have you on the show, buddy. Uh, talk to me a little bit about Bath first. Unbelievable kind of end to the season for you, lads. Top four. Um, I was watching it and having played against Bath loads of times, it was actually really good to see you get back to that physicality, which was synonymous back in the glory days. But how, how good's it been at Bath in general? I think it's been really good. Like, I feel like, I feel like there's a little perception that we were really like exceptionally good after the restart, but we weren't too bad before the restart. We just got a lot better afterwards. Mm. Um, I think we had we had quite a lot of wins before we actually broke up, and then we got obviously a few more afterwards. But that's that's the team. I think I think we're just continually progressing. That's just sort of where we are on the journey. That we just keep getting better, and hopefully we can then push on next year. Let's talk a little bit about your journey then, because. You were in the England squad a couple of years ago when you're 18 months. Did you pick up a nasty injury or something? Is there something happening in camp? Yeah, it's so like, well, I got into um, the Six Nations squad initially, uh, 2018. Um, and then I subluxed my knee in training for Bath. I was meant to go to Portugal the following week. Um, and then, yeah, so I didn't get to play that that time around. And then I got called in to, to tour for the summer that year. That was the South Africa tour. Um, and then that's when I did my big knee injury um, in camp. And then, yeah, so then when I came back from that injury, it took about like nine months to get back from that injury. And then the summer was last year, which was the Barbars game, which I only played in. And then obviously the World Cup. And then this is the position we're in now, really. What's someone like Eddie Jones and the coaches saying to you about how they want you to play? What are they looking for for young lads like yourself coming through playing in that front row? The, the, at the heart of everything is to be like physical. Um, regardless of like everything else, like everything else sort of builds as a layer on top of that to be like a better player. So like, but the, the crux of everything is to be super physical, like whether that's carrying or whether that's defensively or whether that's like at the scrum or like rock time. It's just to be aggressive and to be physical. I think that's like the, the nucleus of a good like prop. And then on top of that, we, we work with like working off the ball and then what you do on the ball and how well you're able to move like defensively, like with the team and how you're able to come onto the ball and just little things like that are, are built on top to improve you as a player, but without being physical, or without being aggressive and trying to be dominant as a new, as a start point, as a foundation, the rest is irrelevant. So yeah, just try and be dominant, as dominant as possible. Yeah, and then tell me a little bit about Eddie. I always ask this when I speak to the lads. Just more, uh, how is your relationship with him, having kind of been in the squad, been injured, and now looking to get another opportunity? I don't know. Like, me and Eddie have quite a good relationship, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Like, um, I, I like to think that we get along. Um, we may, like, we have a lot of conversations, to be fair, me and Eddie, like, a lot of small conversations about things that I can get better on. And just, like, we actually just talk about a lot of things that aren't always to do with rugby, me and Eddie. Um, seems like he, he just cares about um, the individual. So we just talk about a load of load of different stuff. Like pretty much everything you can think of, we probably had a little conversation about. Um, and yeah, we just, he's a, I have a good relationship with him, a real good relationship with him. Well, that seamlessly brings me on to talk about stuff outside of rugby, right? And this is, of course, I wanted to chat to you about the rugby. There's a few big weeks coming up um, in the Autumn Nations Cup, but out with rugby, You've got an amazing project on the horizon that's, that's imminently due. You spoke about Eddie Jones talking to things outside rugby. So there's more to you than scrums and being physical. Just tell us a little bit about this project that you've got in the pipeline. You know, like, so I, I watch a lot of documentaries um, and a lot of films and in my spare time and a lot of series. I'm a big series and documentary person. 
And I just thought, like, I think I can do this. Like, I was like, I genuinely think I can make one. So I sat down and um, fortunately I bumped into a production company and they wanted to shoot something, but they didn't really have an idea of what they wanted to shoot. And I was like, look, oh, I have an idea of something that I want to do. Um, so I just, like, got in touch with them and then we spoke. And then I, I sort of, like, sent out, like, the ideas of how I want to do this and, like, the direction vision and the direction notes. and And basically then produced a documentary that um, will hopefully be on Amazon pretty soon. No biggie then. Just the biggest documentary platform in the world. So what's it about then? <laughs> Come on, mate, you've got to give, uh, you've got to give us some intel, some info to the about, millions. Um, it's all about rugby and class, basically. Um, I feel like rugby has a history of only really reaching certain types of people, um, generally speaking. And I just think it's such a great sport that it should be able to reach more than more than just the people it does, I think. Okay, okay, well, give me a bit more detail on that because I, not that you'd know my backstory, but I've not got what's perceived as, you know, your ger- generic path to play in international rugby. You know, I didn't, go yeah. to, I didn't go to a private school. And I know there's lads coming from different walks of life with the academies and stuff like that, but I'm quite interested, one, obviously for the interview, but for me personally to kind of delve a little bit deeper into kind of what you mean when, when you say that. Well, so like, if we look at rugby traditionally, it's like the, it has like a history of being involved in private schools and the best rugby schools are generally private schools. And that's if you take away from uh, colleges at which people go to just to play rugby. Um, Traditionally speaking, rugby um, is based, like it has a huge base in Southwest London, Um, obviously with Twickenham being based there. So that's like a huge, a huge factor in the people that then play rugby. Like, cause I only played football because obviously my dad played football and everyone around me and my community followed football. Therefore you follow football. So if you were to be in Southwest London and you were to go to a private school, therefore you're probably likely to play rugby. So traditionally, because it has that background, it generally stays within communities, um, those similar communities. Like fortunately I, even though where I grew up, I just happened to go to a school that played rugby. Um, and then I played rugby there, even though I, did, I really didn't want to. They like, um, the headmaster like phoned my mom and said he had to play rugby. And so I ended up playing rugby. Um, and then now I'm in this position and I just feel like other people should be have that opportunity. Like I stumbled upon it. I just think it can be made more of an opportunity for those people if they were to know about it. So like the documentary is sort of a start for that. I think I just feel like grateful. Like I think that's like a big thing. Like I feel like really lucky um, to like be in this opportunity, to have this opportunity. Um, Therefore, I feel like other people should be given the chance. I'm not even saying that they will even be any good at it or because there's so much hard work from the part that I started to this point here. There's a lot of hard work that goes into it, but like at least let them know about it, if that makes sense. Like at least give people the opportunity to know, um, to maybe take it because like, I wouldn't have known. And it's like my neighbours and people around me wouldn't have known. Do you know what I mean? They only follow or know anything about rugby because of me. Um, so I just think that other people, maybe if they see it, um, and maybe we'll do some things afterwards, but if they see at least the documentary as a start, they can maybe start perceiving rugby as a potential opportunity for themselves. Or they might just like the sport as well. They might just think, oh, I really like this sport as well. Yeah, so I was going to ask you as well around the vision. You just mentioned it there. And it was really interesting. And... I want to talk to you about this, and I'm not too sure whether this will be the narrative of the documentary. So Chasing the Sun, the South African documentary, I was over in South Africa a couple of years ago, did an amazing interview with Sia Khaleesi, and we spoke about him being the the first black South African captain and what that meant. Now, there's a lot of um, talk around empowering young black males in sport. Is that one of the narratives that you want to go down and, and, and show people from these communities that rugby is an avenue? Black that wasn't the, the whole goal like but class and race are generally intertwined um but it wasn't the goal for just young black men it was supposed to be just be like for people that went to like simple like community schools for example or or people that um or just like any white person who is from a working class background from burnley do you know what i mean from anywhere in sort of the uk like it was just sort of supposed to be like this could just be an opportunity for you. Like, you might actually like it. You might not know. Um, and that's what happened to me. Like, I, I just stumbled on it and I liked it. So I just think that if I'm able to appeal to them because 
if someone from a similar background appeals to you, you're more likely to listen rather than someone from a completely different background telling you to go and do something. So I just thought if I was able to do that, then it would they're more likely to listen and maybe and one big thing is that person might not take the opportunity um because they'll probably the people that will be watching will be my age but they might become fans of rugby and then their children might do it do you know what i mean and and that's the big factor like it's sort of like maybe the next generation or maybe the 16 year olds might but like the likelihood of it is they become fans of rugby and then their children then um, are able to take the opportunity or or like their younger cousins or their nephews or whatever are able to take the opportunity mm. and without seeing the documentary so I don't I don't know what I don't really know what's it I don't know what's in it at all but when you were out there filming and doing your thing how was it received when you were chatting to people and you were saying this is what we're doing you're talking about rugby were they looking at your blank face or were they just like like they're embracing <laughs> it like how, how did it go down you know like someone so like I went around my area to shoot because like you'll see at the beginning of the documentary, there's like portraits of people. So we've gone around like the area to shoot and people were like, oh, if someone from here plays rugby. Um, and they just couldn't believe it. Um, and, and it was just a bit odd in that sense. Um, they, some people, a lot of it is interviews. So like a lot of it is obviously the people involved in it, like Maro, Genji, Anthony and Bialo are all like uh, featuring in it. So when they speak on it, it's, a lot of it is down to their interviews and like how what they say about it, how the that's how the narrative is brought forth, or the information even is brought forth. Um, I haven't actually got that much information from the outside. Um, it was it was supposed to be a story told by the people within rugby that might not be from traditional rugby backgrounds or who see the issue that is there um, that it doesn't get to everybody. Um, and then let them talk about it. Because I think when it's shown to the public, the public want to see people in those positions. So like you see Maro, for example, playing for England and you see him saying this, it's like, oh, he's there and he believes this. Maybe we might have a listen, you know what I mean? Maybe we might take it on board, maybe we won't, but that's, that's who I thought was the best. These are the people I thought were the best people to portray that message for, to help portray that message at least. Yeah, because a lot of it must be good, right? And I say that because a lot of people, and I've been involved in filming documentaries for Rugby Pass, and you hear people talking about different sports stocks, and they say, oh, yeah, I'm doing it for Netflix, or I'm doing it for Amazon. But actually, it, you know, they're just saying that because anyone could do a doc for Netflix or Amazon. But the fact that you're actually in advanced talks with Amazon, I don't know whether it's been commissioned yet, you might be able to share that with us. Like, that's a big deal. So when you've gone through that process... Out with rugby, I mean, what an experience to be chatting to, you know, a company like Amazon who do the very best documentaries in sport, but in lifestyle as well, in the world, arguably. Yeah, it's kind of surreal. Like, look, gee, when I, when I signed my contract, I was like, oh, I said it, I must have sent, like, a part of the contract to one of my friends and we just couldn't believe it. Because um, obviously when, when I did it, it was sort of like, oh, I'll make this documentary and the plan is to get it on these platforms, but, like, you know, reality of it is that's not always the case. So obviously when, when I sent it to them and they said they liked it, I was like, oh, sick. So <laughs> I thought, I thought I, was, I was just like, yeah, it was kind of surreal. It was kind of weird. It was sort of like, oh, Ben's even picked an England squad and Amazon are now doing a documentary. It's like, oh, life's not too bad at the moment um, for me, thank God. So I'm just grateful, really. Yeah, well, when's it out? When can the masses and the millions of people access it? Is there, is there a premiere? Obviously, there's not because we're locked down. But, I mean, is there going to be a trailer? Is there going to be a bit of momentum building yeah, behind it? Yeah, there will be some momentum. I think, like, <laughs> I thought the momentum would have started this week, but me and Amazon haven't decided that. They, they decided to push it to next week because I think it's supposed to be out next Friday, um, the 13th. So I think I think that's the plan. Um I'll confirm that with you late at some point because I don't want to say that's when it's out and it's not. Um, but that's when it's supposed to be out, yeah. And what's the dream scenario from it? So take away the rugby, the dream scenario is to get cats by England and have an amazing rugby career. But for you personally, you've obviously done this for personal reasons and also using your platform. You know, what is the, you know, the what's the dream ambition? I just hope people, like, because one thing I talk about is like the perception of rugby um as as it is like a white middle class sport that's what i feel like the perception is um and the idea is hopefully by the time i retire 
it's not seen like that. Do you know what I mean? It's seen like a sport, like the documentary is called Everybody's Game. So it's seen as a doc, like a game for like just everybody. Um, and it's no, I don't know if that will happen while I'm still playing. I, I highly, highly doubt it. But um, hopefully it will happen just after I finish playing maybe. Um, but what we do now is there's an importance on the people's careers now. So myself, Genji, Anthony, Maro B, um, in our careers to to push this narrative and push this a lot. So the next people that come through, there's just more of them that come through and they're more comfortable being themselves and then the sport can just be open to all, basically. Beno, I appreciate that chat, mate. Um, I really enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to, you know, one, watching your career unfold, but also the documentary because it's not easy telling stories. It's not easy telling stories that are engaging that are going to appeal to the wider public and... Amazon have backed you, mate, and that's a fucking big deal. So yeah. uh, congratulations to you, mate. And Thank you. Uh, I look forward to watching that. I hope you enjoy it. I hope people actually like it. I'm hoping people like it. I've shown it to people and they've liked it, but they've all been my friends. So yeah. But no, good on you, mate. Legendary. Legend Jim. Thank you, man. Okay, lads, time to deliver. This November. <laughs> Amazon delivers you a brand new international knockout rugby tournament. The Autumn Nations Cup. Live on Amazon Prime. I can't allow that. Go again.